Today, we're diving into the mind-blowing realm of cosmic drama that has been unfolding over billions of years, the celestial dance that has shaped Earth's evolution. So grab your intergalactic popcorn because we're talking about the moon, that enigmatic companion that's been hanging out in our night sky for a cool 4.5 billion years. The moon swings between scorching daytime highs of 127 degrees Celsius, 260 degrees Fahrenheit, and bone-chilling nighttime lows of 173 degrees Celsius, 280 degrees Fahrenheit. The moon's gravitational pull is responsible for Earth's tides. The gravitational force creates a bulge in the Earth's oceans, leading to the rise and fall of tides. The origin of the moon is best explained by the giant impact hypothesis. According to this widely accepted theory, a Mars-sized protoplanet known as Thea collided with the early Earth. The impact was so powerful that it ejected significant amounts of material from both bodies into space. Over time, this ejected material coalesced to form the Moon. The composition of the Moon is primarily derived from Thea, with some contributions from the early Earth. Yeah, it's a bit like a sci-fi origin story, but this stuff is real. Since then, the Moon has been holding us in its gravitational embrace, pulling off some serious tidal bulge action in our oceans, and basically stirring the cauldron of life into existence. Epic, right? But, hold on, what if we were to, you know, nuke the moon? Sounds like a wild sci-fi plot twist. But during the Cold War, both the US and Russia were actually toying with the idea. Stretching from the aftermath of World War II in 1945 to the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, the Cold War was marked by an intense geopolitical face-off between the United States and the Soviet Union. The root cause was ideological differences, with the US championing democracy and capitalism, while the Soviet Union promoted totalitarian communism. But what really stole the spotlight during this intense showdown? Well, cue the drumroll for the nuclear arms race, an epic competition where these superpowers raced to stockpile nuclear weapons, flexing their military muscles for all the world to see. In 1958, the Armour Research Foundation and the US Air Force were researching the potential effects of nuking the moon. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in a space race, each trying to demonstrate technological superiority. But why would anyone want to nuke the moon? What did the moon ever do to us? For one thing, there were concerns about the potential militarization of space during the Cold War. Some military thinkers believed that detonating a nuclear device on the moon could have strategic implications, such as disrupting potential enemy communication or radar systems. There were also scientific motivations, albeit controversial ones. Some scientists believed that studying the effects of a nuclear explosion on the moon's surface could provide valuable data about the composition and structure of the moon. This perspective, however, was not widely supported. Now, imagine if we had the tech to obliterate the moon. Hypothetically speaking, it would take a mind-boggling 9,015 megaton bombs to nuke the moon. Nuclear bombs are challenging to make due to several technical and engineering complexities, as well as the extensive knowledge required in nuclear physics. Nuclear bombs typically use fissile materials like enriched uranium-235 or plutonium-239. The process of enriching these materials to the required levels is highly complex and requires advanced technology. Enrichment involves separating the isotopes of uranium or producing plutonium through nuclear reactors. Initiating the nuclear explosion requires a sophisticated detonation mechanism. The precise timing and coordination of explosive lenses or other methods to compress the fissile material are critical to achieving the necessary conditions for a nuclear chain reaction. For all these reasons, it would be difficult to actually build enough nuclear explosives to nuke the moon. If we did actually manage to nuke the moon, the consequences would be totally catastrophic. The estimated 7, 10 ton, 22 kilograms of lunar debris from the moon's destruction would set off an absolute doomsday scenario. Massive chunks of the moon, ranging in size from small fragments to substantial pieces, would hurtle towards Earth at tremendous speeds. The impact of these lunar remnants, akin to a meteor strike, would lead to widespread devastation. The aftermath would be not be a pretty picture. The entire sky would be completely shrouded in darkness because the moon debris would scatter and block out the sun. But it gets even crazier. The loss of the moon would throw off Earth's orbit, rotation and axial stability. Days would get shorter. Earth would wobble like a cosmic roller coaster and tides, once moon controlled, would go rogue. Marine life, not looking good. 
Oh, and our nights would become pitch black. No more lunar glow means a front row seat to the galaxy's cosmic spectacle. This would result in more extreme temperatures, with some regions experiencing more intense heat, while others face colder conditions. This could lead to disruptions in ecosystems, agriculture, and human settlements. The Earth's orbit also plays a crucial role in determining its climate. Changes in the orbit could lead to variations in the distribution of sunlight across the planet, affecting global temperatures and climate patterns. This, in turn, could impact weather systems, precipitation, and the occurrence of seasons. Instead of nuking the moon, the focus of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union shifted towards peaceful and scientific exploration. Laika, a Soviet space dog, became the first living being to orbit the Earth aboard Sputnik 2 in November 1957. Although Laika did not survive the mission, her journey provided valuable data on the effects of space travel on living organisms. It's a sad story for sure, but far less catastrophic for the world than nuking the moon would have been. The Soviet Union also launched the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, on October 4, 1957, and they achieved several firsts in lunar exploration. Luna 2, 1959, became the first human-made object to reach the moon, and Luna 9, 1966, transmitted the first images from the lunar surface. Luna 16, 1970, successfully returned lunar soil samples to Earth. The United States initiated the Apollo program, a series of crewed space missions designed to land humans on the moon and bring them safely back to Earth. The Apollo missions were a monumental achievement, with Apollo 11 marking the first successful manned moon landing on July 20, 1969. The Apollo program continued with several subsequent missions, each contributing valuable scientific data and expanding our understanding of the moon's geology, surface conditions, and history. Instead of using nuclear weapons, the missions involved spacecraft, lunar modules, and scientific instruments to conduct experiments and collect samples. The information gathered from these missions significantly contributed to scientific knowledge about the Moon and Earth's early history. While the idea of nuking the Moon was part of early space exploration discussions, the focus on crewed and robotic missions turned out to be a more constructive and peaceful approach to studying our celestial neighbor. Today, lunar research encompasses a wide range of scientific investigations aiming to deepen our understanding of the Moon's composition, history, and potential for future exploration. Scientists are studying the moon's surface features, including impact craters, volcanic formations, and geological structures, using data from lunar orbiters and landers. These studies help unravel the moon's geological history and shed light on its formation and evolution. Recent discoveries suggest the presence of water ice and other volatiles in permanently shadowed regions near the lunar poles. Researchers are investigating these findings to understand the distribution, origin, and potential utilization of these resources for future lunar exploration and human habitation. Ongoing studies of lunar soil, regolith, and rock samples collected by Apollo missions and lunar rovers provide insights into the Moon's composition, surface processes, and history. Additionally, plans for sample return missions aim to bring back new lunar materials for analysis. Various space agencies, including NASA, ESA, European Space Agency, CNSA, China National Space Administration, and others, have planned or ongoing missions to the Moon. These missions involve lunar orbiters, landers, and rovers equipped with advanced instruments to conduct scientific experiments and reconnaissance. Advancements in technology, such as improved instrumentation, robotics, and data analysis techniques, continue to drive forward our knowledge of the Moon. In the end, nuking the moon is like flirting with cosmic chaos. It's a stark reminder of the delicate dance that keeps Earth grooving. While this doomsday scenario is firmly in the fiction zone, it's a chance to appreciate the moon for the cosmic dance partner it truly is. So next time you gaze at that silvery orb in the night sky, remember it's not just a moon, it's a celestial beacon guiding the ebb and flow of life on this floating space rock we call Earth. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more mind-bending cosmic content, and as always, keep your eyes on the stars.